So we have another one of these problems where a peg is being pushed on the path of this slot. And at the instant that our peg is at an angle of 30 degrees, they want to know the velocity and the acceleration. And they also give us the angular speed and how fast the angular speed is changing. That's theta double dot, the angular acceleration. So I have my situation. I know that this angle is 30 degrees, but I really want to get used to thinking in radians because a lot of these R theta dot equations need the angles to be in radians or radians per second and stuff like that. So I know that 30 degrees is just pi over 6, but of course you can convert. I need to multiply this by a conversion factor. Degrees will be on the bottom. Radians will be on top, so I can get a nice cancellation here. And I can use any equality that I want. Pi radians is 180 degrees, or maybe pi over 2 is 90 degrees. Any one of them will work. And that's how you can convert any angle in degrees into that same angle in radians. So I'll start with my velocity first. Velocity is nice because I always know something about the velocity. The velocity is always going to be tangent to the path that I'm traveling on. It's all is always what direction am I facing at the instant in question. We can't really do that with acceleration. We can't just look at this object and the path that it's traveling on and know what the direction of acceleration is. But I know that the velocity is going to be in this direction and that we can split this velocity into a transverse component V sub theta and a radial component of velocity. And it appears from my picture that both are going to be going in the in their positive directions. So I'm, I'm thinking that our math is going to give us positives, but again, we'll see. So, of course, we just have the math equation, which says the same, you know, vector statement. And we want to calculate these two components for my velocity. Well, we know my angular speed. That's good. And it shouldn't be too hard to figure out r. Because they give me the r as a function of theta path that this peg takes. So, it's as simple as plugging in 30 degrees and for that angle theta. And solving for r, I'll get 1.86 meters. So now I have the angular speed and my r position of the peg at this point. And now sometimes this is actually enough to calculate my velocity. If, looking up at my picture here, if I somehow knew this angle right here, all I would need is one of my components to be able to run the trigonometry, the sine, cosine, and tangent, and figure out all the different sides of this right triangle. In some problems, I can work the geometry and figure out what this angle of this right triangle is, but it doesn't seem to be the case in this problem. So I'm going to have to figure out my other component, r dot, by taking the derivative of this equation. So I'm going to take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to time. I'm going to see how both sides of this equation change with time. Now looking at my left hand side first, if r squared is a constant, I know I can simply bring it outside my derivative expression. Well r squared is based on r, and r definitely changes as that peg travels along that path. And it seems like my r lines are getting longer. 
So really, I'm expecting when all is said and done, we should get a positive for the change in our radius as time goes on. Just from looking at the picture. So now that I know that this is not a constant with respect to time, I really got to break it down. And it's chain rule that's going on here. What we have is we have one equation inside of another equation. We have an outside equation, this squared operation. And then inside that, we're going to have some r as a function of time. For this r right here, you really got to think of it as some invisible equation in there for r. We don't know what that equation is, but we know that since r is changing with time, there must be some equation that governs exactly how that's working. So, thinking of my chain rule, I know I have a outer and an inner. So applying my chain rule, I'm going to do the derivative of my outer, which is a simple power rule with r inside, times the derivative of the inner. Well, I don't know what this mystery equation is, so really I can't concretely calculate its derivative. So really all I can say is it must have some derivative. And here's the symbol for it, drdt. So that's my left-hand side derivative right there. Chain rule is very, very important in dynamics. Now, my right-hand side, I see this 4, and of course this 4 is a constant. The 4 does not change as time goes on. It's always going to be a 4. So I'm going to bring this outside my derivative expression. And now, sine of 2 theta definitely will be changing with time because it's based on this variable theta. Theta is a variable. As our particle travels, we see that our angular position of this particle seems to be getting bigger as well. So again, I've got to look for my chain rule here. I kind of split up this equation into an inner equation and an outer equation. Outer is the sine, and this 2 theta goes in it. So a derivative of the outer, of that sine part, is going to be cosine, of course the 2 theta stays in there, times the derivative of the inner, the derivative of this thing. Well, if I take that over here, just so I can really focus on it, the derivative of 2 times theta. Well, of course, 2 is a constant, so I can safely bring that outside. As for theta, theta is changing with time. Therefore, there's got to be some equation out there that governs exactly how that works. And therefore, the derivative of this equation really, we don't know what it is, but here's the symbol for it. So 2 d theta dt comes out of this. And of course, this is just theta dot. Just another symbol for this exact same idea. So this, remember, is the derivative of my inner, of this 2 theta here. So it's getting multiplied by the derivative of my outer. And of course, I can't forget that 4. All right, so I've successfully navigated the derivative of the right-hand side of this equation. So remember, our objective here is to solve for r dot. How fast is r changing with time at this instant? r, I know. My angular position at this time, I know. That's just pi over 6. Theta dot, I know as well. So we can just crunch our math here and figure out what r dot is. And I'll get a 2.15. And this is the change in a linear quantity, a length, with respect to time. So this is going to be meters per second. I'm going to make sure I save this equation down here, because I'm probably going to need that for later. So I'll change this to an r dot. And yeah. So if I do my r value, 1.86 times my theta dot, my 2, I can figure out my transverse component. I'll get 3.72.
Let me do this for a second. And my radial component is super easy. It's just r dot, and we just figure that out. 2.15. So because these two things right here are my two vector components, those smaller parts of this overall vector, and because this vector adding situation forms a right triangle, I can just do Pythagorean theorem to figure out my true velocity. And doing that math, we'll get a 4.3 meters per second. So I've got my, got the smaller parts of my velocity, these components, and I got the true velocity itself. So we'll now move on to acceleration. So of course my acceleration can be broken up into two parts as well. Except the equations for those two components are a little bit more complicated. And of course I have really no idea where this true acceleration is going to be acting. So unlike last time for my velocity, where I kind of already knew that I was going to be getting positive numbers for these components based on the picture, not the case here. So looking at our transverse component first, we got r, we got the angular acceleration, we have r dot, we have theta dot. So that's all done. So let's just calculate that right now. And we'll get an 11.39 meters per second squared. And now for our radial component, we don't know this. We know the r and we know the theta dot. Okay, just got to find that. Really, the only way to find this is, unfortunately, we have to take another derivative of this equation right here. Yeah, here is our r dot. So during the course of taking the derivative of both the sides of this equation, hopefully our double dot will come out. So we've got to be very careful here. Doing my derivative of that left-hand side of my equation with respect to time, I have two equations that change with time, getting multiplied by each other. So this is product rule. The derivative of 2r will be 2r dot, and the derivative of r dot is our double dot. And then of course I've got to follow through with my product rule. First equation times the derivative of my second equation plus my second equation multiplied by the derivative of my first equation. And similar deal with the derivative of my right hand side. This equation is based on theta, therefore it changes with time. This equation as well. So for this guy, this is basically the same chain rule step we already walked through. So that's going to be 4 times negative sine of 2 theta times the derivative of this inside here, 2 theta dot. Derivative of my right equation is a little simpler, 2 theta double dot. So I'll have my right equation multiplied by the or I'm sorry, my left equation multiplied by the derivative of my right equation plus my right equation multiplied by the derivative of my left equation.
So each one of these quantities we have a value for, except for the one we're trying to solve, beta double or r double dot. So we'll do all that math, and we'll get a negative 15.77 for our r double dot. So with that last piece of information, I can figure out my radial component of acceleration. So just plug that math in. And I'll get negative 23.21. So now that I know both of my smaller components of my true acceleration, I can do my vector drawing. My radial component is going to be negative. It's going to be like that. My transverse component is in the positive direction. I want to make sure I draw a little bit smaller since it's only 11. So my true acceleration is going to be somewhere in this direction. And I can figure out how much that acceleration is by doing the Pythagorean theorem. And I'll get a 25.8. So I've got my acceleration, got my velocity, and we're done. Yeah, a lot of derivatives flying around. Don't forget chain rule, don't forget product rule, and just be very careful of stepping through all that math. Okay, hope it all made sense. Please ask me any questions you may have in the comments.